Oh my gosh, that's good coffee. Look at my coffee mug. My coffee mug, Federalist, you know, fresco, not fresco, relief, matches exactly the one used by Janine Palmy Vega on the cover of Women of the Beat Generation. I'll just turn it that way. No, then my hand covers it. We'll do that. We'll do, check it out. Janine Palmy Vega was a beat poet, of course. From a very young age, I think when she was 16, she started ha uh, hanging out at the, um, you know, the coffee places and the and the poetry places in California. And then at some point she married a painter named Fernando, whose last name I forget. But I'll say she's got a little book of poetry. I've told this story before, but here, here it is again. I don't know where I told it. Maybe I was telling it to my aunt or maybe I told it on a podcast or last year on National Poetry Month. But anyway... So she marries Fernando, the painter, the Spanish painter. He dies shortly after, I think like within five years. So she's like, you know, 22 or something. And she's writing poetry. And she wrote a little book, a little chapbook sized book called Songs to Fernando or Poems to Fernando. But I think it's songs for or to Fernando. And so I had to buy it in my grim Texas days. And I ordered it from a place that was a like coffee shop. It had tiger in the name. I don't remember what uh, the name of the place was, but it was a coffee shop that also sold books. And they um, sent me the wrong book. They sent me a play by somebody with a similar last name, but it was from the 1890s. And I was like contacting them. Oh, whoops. You sent me this instead. What I ordered was songs to Fernando. And they said, oh, send it back and we'll send you the book. And so I, in my mind, either they said, like, send it back in the next 24 hours, or I had in my mind, I have 24 hours with this play and I'm going to read it and maybe it'll change my life. Well, that is where, that that is the play that reawakened the word hectic for me. Like there was a person, like a servant visiting an apothecary and saying, not, not that not that powder for my mistress that makes her look hectic. And I was like, oh, I need that. Oh, no, no. Come on, let's not have glitches again. Because that really bugs me. Because then I'm like, ah, and my face is frozen. I don't, I don't. You know, I'm not as proud as I used to be. But let's just, you know, I got to figure out that hotspot thing. But anyway, here's the thing. Woman who was sort of the villain of the play loving this young girl, young, beautiful girl, you know, early, late teens or whatever. And um, it's kind of taking her for a daughter, but with all the time, these designs in her mind, if I recall correctly, but I do know that the young girl in the end didn't, didn't survive. And, uh, and the villainous sort of woman freaked out and jumped on her coffin or jumped into her grave or something. But I remember strongly identifying with the villain woman, the mean woman, because of her brokenhearted childlessness. I have a child because I wanted a whole, first I feared childlessness even before I ever had cancer surgery when I was 24. I saw an episode of Law and Order, somebody killed somebody because of, hey, we were going to adopt her baby, but the mother changed her mind, you know, and I was like, <gasps> childlessness is possible when you don't want it. And, and so that really haunted my mind. And then, I don't know, self-fulfilling prophecy, the, 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 the project, the projection of the poet's heart. Oh my gosh. I don't know what, I don't know how mystical life works. Right. And, um, and then I had surgery to remove like one and a half of my ovaries when I was 24 and I wasn't married and there were really no prospects in sight, but got married a couple of years later, had a kid four years after that. So without heroic measures. Um, interesting, right? But that play, and then I got poems to Fernando. I'm going to have to find it and read it again because I mean, she's a young poet, but oh, the life experience and oh, how she just had that poet mindset and went on to do a lot of good work. So Janine Pommy Vega on the cover of Women of the Beat Generation, Twin Mugs. I'll put that right over there. And I'm going to show off my poetry freak shirt. I had the best time yesterday because I was invited to be the poetry freak for National Poetry Month at Christian Ott Elementary School here in my hometown by my friend Sean. Check him out, Johnny Farrow on Bandcamp. Um, and the kids were really 
a lot deeper than I was. This was elementary school. I'd say most of them were what, like third to fifth grade. And they were, they were deep souls and dark and they loved writing horror things. And I read them some werewolf poems that I'd written for them and they could not have been more engaged and, and present. And they just, whatever I dished out, they ran with it. And it was really a blessing. I mean, what a great thing to do in national poetry month and i have to thank sean because you know the schools don't just let you wander in and do that and he does an after school program they're a writer's club which i think is one of the like coolest things you can do with kids because these kids have some that you know they've got some emotions and they've got some you know life situations as do we all but i would say that there's are a little you know a little more hectic than some <laughs> so um anyway to use a word so i really i really dug that i really sucked the juice out of that it was wonderful here is dylan thomas this is the original see there's a string hanging from it because it did knit him two little sweaters in swatches um dylan thomas if you've listened to the current episode i'm trying to get him in some good light here um current episode of podcast in a minor does run through a roll call of troubled poets i mean we're all troubled in some ways but some whose whose behavior may have uh, demonstrated it more than others right you know the the difficulties of the human condition but there's a photograph of dylan thomas just smoking that cigarette with that bottle of whiskey there and and his two sweaters on that just touched my heart so i've got gicle prints of this in my etsy shop which i did open back up i think i'm gonna put some poet portraits on sale i haven't done it yet i was trying to do it like while i was lying in bed this morning on my phone but sorry etsy seller your mobile app was not helping me because every time i would try to select an item the menu would be way off to the side so i was trying to decide you know i was trying to find my poet portraits to select and they're just bumped way over and I can't find them. So I was really annoyed. I was annoyed. Okay. Well, heck, I haven't even read a weird work yet. And I don't know where my glasses are. So let's see how it goes. I've got a, I've got a short one here. Sing. When we never met, I felt it strike. There you go. Weird work. Onward to beautiful words. Um, the word was bungalow that I drew yesterday. So this poem which I wrote on a scrap of paper that I cut off the bingo cards for the, for the writer's group yesterday. Um, I just carried them to work with me and thought, I'm going to write on that. Okay. Night and to the bungalow, it's deep set staircase of wood that remembers that creaks with the stove heat and groans now all hours with loneliness. To the bungalow's kitchen, much more optimistic, with its vivid memories of dinners and pies. Bungalow. Bungalow poem. Let's find a beautiful word for tomorrow's poem. What do we have? Nemesis. Well, that's going to change the tone from bungalow to nemesis. So nemesis is the beautiful sounding word that has a little bit of an ominous meaning enemy flare for tomorrow um and finally i don't know where the poetry hats are oh i think i found one okay so poetry hats are back to pink for today and i will draw a nighttime gibberish phrase for the poetry hat of today i perch in the trance just shy of acceptance not really knowing how to make this visible and going on and on about it I perch in the trance just shy of acceptance for the poetry hat of today. Well, I've gone on and on. I've done some poetry. I think we only had one glitch. I've got my Federalist milk glass coffee mug, just like Janine Pommy Vega, whose work I hope you'll check out. And I hope you'll have a really good day this uh, 13th day of April, 13th day of National Poetry Month. This Sunday is third Sunday poetry. It'll be here on youtube uh, with angela eureka smith and we'll talk poetry oh i said a few days ago i'm gonna do a lipstick theme on saturday i don't know why i picked saturday i think when i said that i thought it was thursday you know i was like oh that's coming up and tomorrow i'll do this and the next day well it was like monday or something when i said that um but i'm gonna save that as national poetry month and the rest of life get kind of woven in and out and 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 
lots of cool obligations and, 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 and goals set, which I'm really enjoying with podcast, with presenting poetry here. And then like yesterday with the kids and the week before at the open mic night, it's really been a buzz. And then I've got my job and then I've got my life. And, um, and so I am going to hold on to my lipstick theme for Sunday, third Sunday poetry to make that a little less pressure. Um, but I will keep up uh, writing the daily beautiful poems here and sharing books I like and the rest. So have a marvelous Thursday and see you tomorrow.